So the next thing to just to go over is um, uh, things to talk about and ask during the consultation with uh, a coach. So you've uh, done the research, you've looked at their content, you've liked their stuff, you've then had a look at their services that they have on offer, you've sort of seen like, do they offer services and coaching that are necessary for you to be able to develop your skill in this particular niche? And now you're at the point where you're reaching out to the coaches. So I'm gonna just make this disclaimer now and this is something that I really really want you to hold on to when you end up having this consultation with every coach that you speak to uh, and this is with the uh, the great ones and the really bad ones but you need to bear in mind that uh, or be wary that um, the people that you're talking to they are very good at seduction and sales so they know how to negotiate you into coaching and that can even mean the ones who they shouldn't be working with you they're not the right kind of coach for you but they will say and do and offer what they can to uh to woo you into working with them so never rush making a decision when working with a coach okay there's they're not going anywhere you're not going anywhere well, unless unless they're um they're only in a particular city for a period of time, then maybe there's a bit more added pressure there. But I wouldn't rush into going into working with a coach, you know, especially if they are a lot of money for the particular program that you're willing to go for. You know, be very very sensible with making your decision. So, in no particular order, just that some of the things that you want to be discussing with um with a dating coach to just flush out um if you're going to be right for them or, or vice versa um is uh well first of all that a coach should ask you about your problems your backgrounds and your sticking points um it's kind of a bit of a red flag if they uh they're just literally just having a chat with you and then trying to get you onto the coaching without finding out well you know what are the problems that you're going through what's your backstory what has led you to this moment with the problems that you've got uh is a dating coach going to be suitable for helping you with these problems or maybe is another coach going to be suitable so like a therapist or something um and uh you know are the sticking points that you've got is that something that certainly a coach can also advise you with um you also should ask and find out what you'll learn from that coach uh, and what kind of plans the coach has uh, uh when it comes to teaching you so once they've actually found out like your sticking points and your problems and stuff, what are they going to do or what ideas do they have in mind when it comes to taking you out and uh, getting you to work on these particular things? Um, so like, for example, let's say you do struggle with, um, uh, you want to develop your conversation skills. Uh, let, let's just say it's just a very easy one. There's a very broad title as well, but yeah, we'll, we'll work with it. Then you might say, look, how, uh, where, where can we go that I can then develop my conversation skills? Um, they might say, well, okay, well, yes, we're going to do some stuff on the street, but I think what would be really good is I'm going to take you to some museums as well, so and some galleries, so you then have an opportunity to have things in the room and in the environment to be able to talk about, uh, and then it will get you comfortable with this idea of having very indirect and direct conversations with women that you're attracted to. So that would be an example, you know, or let's say you've approached, you've, you in the conversation, you said like, you know what, there, um, whenever I go into coffee shops, there's always women that, that I like, and I'm always scared to do it. Then the coach should be able to say to you like, okay, well, during our coaching, I will make sure then to, uh, to take you to coffee shops or, when we're walking around and doing our approaching every time we pass a coffee shop i'm going to take you into a coffee shop and we're going to see if there's someone that you can talk to even if it's at the minimum just giving a compliment or having a conversation or being indirect or being direct whatever but that's what i'm going to do so hopefully that's that's a, a nice clear example of that but um yeah you want to make sure that you are going to be learning things that you want to learn uh if a, a coach kind of like like skirts, I think that's the word, skirts over that, then just keep that at the back of your mind that 
if you go with that coach, they're going to just do the very generic thing. They're not going to take you to the places that perhaps you do want to learn things from. Uh, even though you can um, very easily make that statement and say, well, look, can we go to some museums? Can we go to some galleries? I'd love to learn how to do some stuff there. Then, then sure. Um, you also need to ask uh, about the session structure. Um, uh, so how, what is the itinerary for the time that you're going to be working together? You know, make sure it is very clear when you're going to start, when you're going to stop, when there's going to be breaks. Um, uh what is there going to be like a development or a growth of how the sessions evolve? Like, are you going to just start off with just doing, uh, you know, simple stops and compliments, or is he going to just really throw you into the deep end with stuff? Uh, now obviously that can kind of change on the day, you know, the, uh, the time of the week, uh, the weather, even, you know, all of that can influence the, the change of the session, but, um, uh, it's, it's just a good idea just to get a sense of what to expect when uh, uh, it comes to the session itself. Uh, will you be working with the coach or will you be passed to someone else? Um, so depending on what service you go for, so let's say you're going to do like a weekend training where you know you're going to be with a lot of guys, then um, you want to double check and find out like, you know, who in particular are you going to be working with? And I'll, I'll cover some things in, in the things not to tolerate list. But you do want to make sure that you're going to work with people that you want to work with, um, as well as you are going to get the kind of training that you are paying for um, as well. Um, so there's nothing wrong with doing a bit of uh, vetting and asking like, you know, so uh, am I going to be working with just you as the coach? If they say no, you'd be like, OK, well, who else am I going to be working with? They'll say, oh, well, I don't know yet. And then you can quiz it. You can say, well, you know, I, I want to work with someone who helps me with this and this and this. Um, and, you know, can you also send me some content on that person so I can see if I like their style? Um, because if you find that you're going to end up doing a coaching program and working with people that you just really don't want to work with, that's not what you paid for, then you shouldn't be jumping into that particular program. If you want to work with a coach, then you are paying to work with a particular coach don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let them kind of like screw you out of that argument and say, well, no, I'm, I, you know, oh, I'm doing this instead and, you know, go and work with this person. Like, no, if you're paying to work with a coach, you are paying to work with that coach. Um, uh, what was the next one? Uh, okay. Uh, oh yeah. Talk about payment plans and refund policies. Um, uh, and, and ask about taste, taste, to ask about taste sessions if need be. This is one I know it's been a long video. Um, so uh, with this one, you know, find out how they would like to be paid. Um, usually a coach, to be honest, will like to either have a deposit made or you pay all up front. Um, if you've got the option to, I personally would say make a deposit. Um, if you are committed to going to a coach, but at least with the deposit thing, if you did decide that you don't want to work with a coach, then you can always change your mind. You might have to accept that smaller loss of a couple of hundred quid, but you know what? It's better than losing a couple of grand. So um, do just consider that. And if a coach doesn't offer you the option of a deposit, then make sure that you are 100% certain you want to work with the coach and you are committed to doing it. You don't want to end up handing over a lot of money and then going like, oh, you know what? Actually, I think I've changed my mind. Uh, because I, and, and I can kind of resonate with a coach a little bit. They'll, they'll get pissed off with it as well. They're not wasting their time with, with people, especially the good coaches. They, they don't see why they should waste their time with someone who's very hesitant about changing their life. So if you're going to, if there's no deposit option, make sure that you are a hundred percent certain you want to work with that coach. It is okay not to rush into working with a coach. They aren't going anywhere except they'll travel around the world maybe, but they'll come back and you just book them at a later time but you are better to be 100% certain rather than being rushed or pressured into anything. Um, uh, next one. Uh, oh, and, yeah, uh, and with the taste sessions, sometimes as well, if a coach is really expensive, ask them if they've got a taster session and pay for that. If they say, well, you know, I, I only offer like a, like a three, four, five hour coaching thing. You can do that instead. It's a couple of hundred quid. Do that. Because at least then, if you've worked with the coach, decide it's not for you, again, at least it was only a couple of hundred quid that's been spent. 
Um, and you've also got the experience of going out on the street anyway. Um, but also, if you work with the coach and find absolutely brilliant, I loved it. I would say like really good coaches would tend to give you a slight um, discount on uh, upselling you to um, that main coaching. We've got hiccups again now. Um, so uh, yeah, just just something to consider. Anyway. They won't always offer a discount, but they sometimes they do offer like a bit of an indifference um, with like, well, you've paid 300 quid, so I'll not 300 quid off of that extra coaching thing that that you'll do. Um, but that that's their own personal preference um, when it comes to that. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, ask about what to expect whilst doing street approaching. Um, so, uh, and also uh, ask about the expectations of results uh, in consideration to your current level. So when you do go out on the street with a coach, to be honest, it really is a bit of a lottery with how busy or quiet the streets are. So depending on the time of the week that you're going, uh, certainly weekends are going to be busier. Certainly a city is going to be busier than, than other places. So just bear in mind, like, you know, it, it really is a lottery. You might also find that you'll have a day where there's people just, you know, there's not, there's people that you're not attracted to. And then there will be people that you are just heavily attracted to. And maybe you're like ricocheting off of like every person that you see. So, um, yeah, have an expectation that also it is out of uh, a coach's hands when um, uh, it, it comes to the expectations. But you can ask them about that and say, like, what's it like doing approaching in London, you know, or in these particular locations? Or if you've got a type of woman that you're attracted to, then, you know, you might say, oh, can we go to Camden or can we go to uh, South Bank or something? And they'll say, all right, well, this is what to expect in these areas. Um, and just lastly in this bit, uh, before I go on to the last section, uh, is um, you certainly a coach needs to be asking you about any mental health issues that you've got um, and uh, just where you are um, socially in life as well. And to be honest, a good coach should turn you down if you say something that they just aren't qualified to be able to work with. So if you do have some kind of mental condition uh, or mental health issues of sorts, you have to be open with the coach and you have to kind of, you, you have to basically vet them to find out like, are they going to be okay helping you with these issues because there have sadly been coaches in the past who will just say, yep, yeah, I can work with you. And um, they, they just can't at all. And you are just going to be taken advantage of. And sadly, there's no way really to, to filter that. Um, but you need to just, if anything, ask them about like, what, um, what do they, what are their skills in regards to helping people with certain mental health issues, whether maybe it's like depression or some kind of psychosis uh, or if maybe they have a uh, loneliness or Asperger's or something like that or autism, then you you need to find that out um, and 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 have a, a conversation with them about that. If like, are they going to be able to manage it? Uh, again, having like a taster session might be the best thing because then they can be very honest about it. Um, I've actually got a client who I absolutely admire with this where um, once he's had the consultation he, and he works with the clients once they come forward, uh, if he feels very early on in the coaching that they just aren't coping, he genuinely turns around to them and says, uh, I think we should call the session, come call the session to at the end, uh, call the session to an end and I'm going to give you a refund. I don't think I can help you. Uh, and I admire the honesty with that, which not many coaches do. So just be very, very wary with that. Right, the, uh, the camera ran out there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of everything with uh, the uh, the things to talk about or ask during the consultation. Um, and, um, you know, there might be other things there that I've missed out, but ultimately it, it really is important that you, you vet the coach that you're talking to and talk to a couple at a time. Don't be afraid to, you know, speak to two or three different coaches, get a feel of them, um, I'd rather you do that than end up working with a coach, find that they were the wrong coach for you, and then you go through the exact same process with someone else, and then you end up getting those results because it's a lot of money to be spending uh, by doing something like that.